Hello, all you young artists. This is going to be the last video in the Facial Features with a Twist project. And my purpose for this video is to focus on shading tips and techniques and to uh, just demonstrate how I'm choosing to shade this artwork so that you can gain maybe some inspiration or some perspective on how you can shade your own artwork. I'll tell you right off the bat that I didn't end up finishing this artwork, unfortunately. I messed it all up at a certain point and got paint all over it. So this is a partial video of the shading process, but it still gives you an idea of what I was shooting for. To shade this artwork, I'm using just a normal number two pencil. I'm not using a mechanical pencil because I'm not focusing on things like cross hatching or hatching. If I were, I could use a mechanical pencil, but I find that I have more control over applying different shading techniques with a regular pencil because I can turn the pencil and angle the pencil in different ways. I can sharpen the pencil to a fine point or I can wear it down to a flat uh, point and I can get different effects with it that way. As you can see, I've started with the night sky inside the mouth and I'm just kind of blocking out all of the dark areas. I'm not necessarily going as dark as I will go eventually. And you can also see that I can use my eraser to go back in and draw with the eraser. I decided to add some like flashes of light, lines of light. And the process of drawing is often like that. It's very common to be going back and forth between using the pencil lead and the eraser to draw and shade. The eraser is equally important tool for shading. You can blend with it, you can bring out highlights with it. Oftentimes when I'm teaching shading, I will focus a lot on trying to control your shading to create smooth shading but which is a really great skill by the way but in reality most of the things that we shade are gonna have some kind of texture to them they're gonna have um, a surface quality that is not completely smooth and so we actually want to use our shading in different ways um, with different lines and marks to create the different surface qualities of the objects we're shading, the different textures that they have. They shouldn't all look the same. They shouldn't all be smooth because that's not how things are in the real world. And giving things different textures creates variety, which is nice and exciting to look at in artwork. You can see that I started shading the cityscape inside the mouth and I did that for a little bit and then I moved on to the bottom lip and started blocking in some of the darker parts of the bottom lip and I do that a lot and I recommend that other people do this a lot where they jump around to different areas of the artwork. I think it's really beneficial to work on multiple areas of the artwork at once and allow the different parts of the artwork to all develop at once. If you completely finish an area before you've even started other areas, then you really don't get a chance to see how those areas are going to look together. So it's nice to do all of them at once. As I'm shading these different things, and especially the lips and the mouth, I am referring back to my reference photos that I took. I took a photo of my own mouth and so I had that next to me and I was looking very closely at the shadows and highlights and the complexity of the different darks and lights and the texture that was happening in that photograph in order to inform how I would do the same thing in my drawing. So I encourage you to not just kinda go after it and um, make it up but definitely with the facial feature, have a resource image of the facial feature so that you can 
see all the complex details and shadows and highlights and textures. I think it's really important to do that, especially with a facial feature, but I also did it with the other parts of the artwork, the city skyline. Although with the city skyline, I could make a lot of it up, but I still use the reference picture to see different varieties of windows and details and um, shapes that buildings can take. I wasn't trying to copy them necessarily, but they were inform informing me about how things are in the real world so that I could, so that I was more equipped to be creative in my drawing. So much of shading is about layering and a couple of different ways we layer in shading. We're layering to build up darker values and we're also layering different techniques together. So when I go in and I start shading these lips again pretty soon, I'm going to be layering techniques to show the roundness of the lips, those lines and the cracks in the lips. And I'm, they're almost similar to hatching lines, but they're lines to create the texture. And then there's also, I'm also layering smooth shading along with that. So it's about layering that variety of techniques to create the depth of texture and that depth of the surface quality of the subject. And when I'm shading these lips, once again, I definitely have my resource image right there with me. If I didn't have some kind of resource to look at, I would just be making it up and I wouldn't, I wouldn't know where these complex shadows are, where these complex highlights are and how they work, how the lighting is hitting the object. I wouldn't be able to see all of the lines and the cracks and how they work together. So I definitely need to have my resource handy. And that could be in the form of a mirror to look at your own facial feature. Could be in the form of a picture that you take or find as long as you have something. So right here, as I'm shading the lips, you can see me do that. You can see me layer different techniques. You can see different kinds of lines and textures happening at once. There's lines and texture and sort of a hatching that creates the cracks. And there is the smooth shading that creates some of the shadows that change. And then it's also layering in the sense that I have to continue to add value in order to make certain areas dark. So that's layering as well. Two forms of layering there. You can see that I'm erasing a lot of the uh, light streaks in the background. That's because I decided that I was going to go with the color technique that you guys um, mentioned and asked if that was a possibility. Um, I decided that I'm just going to make a certain part of the drawing have color and it's going to be sort of a focus, something that grabs your attention. It's going to be a, something that contrasts against the black and white of the rest of the picture. But as I said to you in person, there's a little bit of a difficulty that comes with trying to use colored pencil along with regular pencil. They mix in a way that is challenging. They're not as easy to work with. And overall, um, even though I really wanted to do a good job, I wasn't super happy with the result that I came up with. And in a way, that's kind of a good thing for you guys because even somebody who is experienced is going to encounter problems and things and mistakes, things that I can't overcome in the way that I was hoping to overcome them. 
and I have to be okay with that. And um, that should be encouraging to you too, because you know you're going to encounter problems and mistakes, and it's not going to be exactly what you had envisioned. But the flip side of that is it's also important to learn and adjust like how are you going to deal with that like what are you gonna do now if it's not gonna be exactly what you thought it was gonna be and wanted it to be what can you do still like what can you make it how can you achieve something nice and interesting and overcome that obstacle how can you change your expectations a little bit of what you wanted to have happen I started making another mistake here. I can see different smudges definitely forming on the different areas of my artwork. I wasn't being careful enough. I should have laid down a piece of paper on top of where my hand is going to be so that I wouldn't be rubbing all over the paper. That's an often overlooked simple way to protect your artwork, having a paper to rest your hand on. So I should have done that and you should do that as well. I'm using white right now to try and blend in the color that I added to give it a glossy look. I wasn't super able um, or successful with creating a glossy look and I think it had to do a little bit with the difficulty that comes with mixing colored pencil with regular pencil. But I layered the colored pencil quite a bit just like I layered regular pencil and it started off kind of rough and the idea is that as you add color and layer color it produces a more glossy or waxy look and you also increase your pressure as you layer with colored pencils in order to create that look but I never got a chance to finish it because shortly after filming this segment I got paint all over the artwork and kinda ruined it so this is where I'm gonna stop I hope you can find some tips that can help you with your artwork in this video. Good luck.